Welcome to the Master Your Happy Podcast. I am Robert Rio. Every episode, I am going to reveal techniques to help you live a happier, more motivated, more inspired life. I hope you can use these techniques in your everyday life. I hope you listen, I hope you subscribe, and I hope you rate and review every episode. And now let's get to this week's episode. I will never forget the day I lost my job. It was horrifying. I was in complete shock and felt like my world was shattering around me. Instead of showing my feelings and emotions to my family and the world, I decided that I had to be strong and and act like it was for the best act like everything was going to be all right, even though I really wasn't sure that it was going to be all right. And I know it seems cliche, but when you go through a tragedy or a crisis, like losing your job, most of us experience some version of the five stages of grief. We may think this is reserved for death or divorce, but the same principles apply to any tragedy in your life, including losing your job. We're all different, so everyone experiences these stages differently. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, the psychiatrist who identified these stages, said they're not necessarily experienced linearly, and some people may not experience them at all. They're just broad, sweeping stages that people go through when grieving. So recognizing these stages can help you cope with the loss of your job and help you deal with your emotions so you can begin to recover professionally. So what are these five stages of grief specifically dealing with a job loss? Well, the first stage is denial. When I first lost my job, I was in complete denial. I refused to believe that anything bad happened. And when people asked me if I was okay, I'd simply laugh it off. You know, of course I'm okay. You know, I'd say to people, of course. And, and, And it's a blessing in disguise. You know, now I can find a better job with higher pay. That seemed like a great thing to tell myself at the time, of course. But what I was really doing was refusing to accept the loss of my job. For other people, denial may be insisting that their employer will reconsider and will ask them to come back or that the loss is only temporary. So if we want to get scientific about denial... A paper from the American Chemical Society explains the purpose of denial as functioning as a buffer, initially protecting you from strong emotions such as anger and allowing you to continue functioning. So think about that. Denial actually works as a buffer that protects you from strong emotions such as anger and allows you to continue functioning. It's a necessary stage. You know, of course, losing your job will give you more time for hobbies. And your employer very well may reconsider. And and something better probably will come along eventually. But the point is, when you're in this stage of denial, you are emotionally rejecting the loss of your job to protect yourself. Denial is a necessary stage of grief, but it can also become a problem. For example, if if you're in denial, you may not even bother looking for a new job because you're rejecting the fact that you lost your job altogether. Or maybe you're in financial denial and continue spending money on meals and luxuries like you were before you lost your job, even though you know you now have no income. So you lost your job. You're acting like nothing even happened. You're still spending the money that you no longer have coming in. You're in denial that anything bad even happened. Self-evaluation is very important at this stage. You want to be honest about how you feel and the cause of your job loss. Because awareness of what happened Awareness is the first step to change. Face the problem, but don't dwell on it 24 hours a day. You know, this is just making it's going to make you feel worse. Think about it enough to understand what you feel and to find the best way to respond to it. Then focus on something more positive. 
Research suggests that avoiding thinking about or dealing with your problems actually creates more stressors. This phenomenon is known as stress generation. For example, if you don't open your bills, you'll end up getting calls from bill collectors. Stress generation. You're avoiding one problem, opening up the bills. You're creating another problem, having bill collectors call you. You're just generating more stress and more problems by ignoring one problem. Now, during this stage of denial, it, it, it's also tempting to want to shut yourself in and avoid friends and family. And you don't want to hear everybody tell you that it'll be okay. That's, that's what you hear during this stage. It'll be okay. You don't want to burden other people with your problems and you don't want to feel judged. And that's normal. But it's actually at this time that you want to open yourself up. And you could be attending network events. You could be asking colleagues for job recommendations. You could be volunteering. And you never know where that opportunity may come from. The second stage of grief during a job loss is anger. You're going to be angry. Once reality sets in, it's natural to feel angry about losing your job. You might be angry at your employer, your former co-workers, the economy, or even yourself. You're going to be looking for a place to put your anger, and it doesn't matter where it goes at this point. It's at this point that you're going to want to find support. Possibly try to surround yourself with friends and family that understand your current challenge. There are also many community job search support groups available. So many support groups available out there for people looking for jobs. It would be a great idea to seek them out and actively participate in them. Not just seek them out, but actively participate in them with people who are going through the same thing that you are and get support from them. Also, keeping a journal and writing down your feelings during this stage will also let you track your feelings and pinpoint your anger. And this could help you avoid taking your anger out on those around you. And by being proactive about your emotions and act actions, it's like I always say, Become proactive in your life. Become proactive with your emotions and actions instead of reactive, and your life will turn around. And as your outward anger subsides, you start to move into the next stage, which is bargaining. Bargaining is a very interesting stage to me. And during this stage, you may start to try to convince yourself that maybe if you dress differently or acted differently, that you'd still have your job. I mean, the truth is the way you dressed or, or even acted may have had nothing to do with losing your job. It could have been budget cuts. It could have been politics in the, in the workplace. It, it could have been a million things, but it may have nothing to do with the way you dressed. And there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, you know, but maybe you do need to dress a little better. Who knows? Time spent worrying about that and looking for new clothes at this point could be better spent looking for a job or going to a networking event and looking for a new job, networking with people, trying to get a new job at this point, not worrying about if you dress differently, um, you know, if you would have done this differently or that differently. And during this stage, you can often feel a lot of guilt. And this can be bad for your self-esteem. Now, I just did different, uh, an episode on how to boost your self-esteem, but when it comes to losing your job, you tend to make yourself feel unnecessarily guilty. And you should ask yourself three questions at this point. What did I accomplish, achieve, or get done? Okay. What am I proud of, basically, at that last job? What did I accomplish, achieve, or get done? And what am I proud of at that last job that I had? What did I learn about myself? Or what new skills did I learn at my previous job? And who did I help and how? Turn this into a positive. Spin this around. Think of the positive out of this. Not, oh, I did something wrong. I got fired. I got laid off. Think about the positives. What did you achieve? What did you accomplish? What did you get done? What are you proud of? What did you learn about yourself? What new skills did you 
gain out of this job? And who did you help and how? And once you have a few things on your list, pick out the ones you're most proud of. Then write about it. Tell a story about it even. Even if it's just one paragraph, just tell a story about it. Put it into words. Put your thoughts down. Form thoughts about it. And then have that as your achievements and your 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 goals that were achieved and you can boost your self-esteem and feel good about that. Instead of feeling bad about your previous job, you start to feel positive about it. And I'm really not asking you to do this for no reason. It, it seems like, oh, well, you always want me to write stuff down in the journal. You always want me to do this. I'm not asking you to do this for no reason. It serves a purpose. It keeps the guilt that is often associated with this stage of bay because it, it it concentrates on your accomplishments. Like I said, it spins it around to a positive. It also keeps those accomplishments grounded in reality because they're things you actually did. You're not going to exaggerate or, or make them seem worse than they really are. You're not going to exaggerate on the negative or, or, or focus on the negative. You're going to focus on the positive and you're going to write them down in a paragraph in story form and be proud of that. The next stage, the third stage of grief after losing a job is depression. And depression is very common after a job loss. And it's a natural transition from the bargaining stage. I'm, I'm here and I'm here to tell you that it's perfectly normal and acceptable to feel depressed at this stage. Perfectly normal and acceptable. Validate your right to feel miserable. Dr. Robert L. Leahy, uh, who's the author of The Worry Cure, he spoke on NPR and he said, validate your right to feel miserable. You're a human being. You have a right to feel unhappy. Once you've given your emotions space to exist, you can start to see the big picture more clearly, enabling you to act in ways that will help you and your career. So validate your right to feel miserable. You have every right to feel unhappy at this point. Don't feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about feeling bad. And that part was difficult for me because it really was the worst and hardest stage for me to go through. And I kept telling myself that enough was enough and I was over it and I didn't want to deal with it. I was tired of feeling depressed, but I would always end up right back there. And there were a few things that will help you get through this stage. And one is a daily routine. Daily routine will help give you direction and purpose. A daily routine will not only put some structure back in your life, but it will also help you begin to search for a new job. You can even include some hobbies in here. Daily routine, following a daily routine every day, will put structure back in your life. It just won't seem like one day is going into the next. Put some hobbies in your daily routine. Make it fun. Put some hobbies in your routine that you never had time for when you did have a job. Um, it's going to help take your mind off your situation just for a little while during the day and help you recharge and refresh. Uh, if you include some exercise in your daily routine, you may feel the benefits of, of the endorphins that are released. This feel-good chemicals into your brain that make you feel a little happier during the day. Um, but... During your day, also in your daily routine, put in time to find a new job. But this structure is going to help you because when you had a job, you had structure. You woke up, you got ready, you went to your job, you came home from your job, you did things at night, you went to bed, you did the same thing. You had structure. You need to keep some sort of structure in your life to keep that continuity going. The next stage, acceptance. It's actually the final stage, the final stage of this whole process. We've come down to the end. The final stage of this whole process is acceptance. And you understand what happened. You've experienced it. And you're functioning through it. You've got to this stage. You, you've, you've made it to the acceptance stage. And one very important thing about this acceptance stage is not to force it. If you're not ready for acceptance and you move right to it after losing your job or you move to it too soon, 
you're really in denial. You're back in the denial stage. If you're not ready for it, you're not ready for it. You can't force yourself to the acceptance stage. You can't go right to the acceptance stage from losing your job. It's impossible. And the best way to know if you're truly over your job loss and in this stage of acceptance is if you can talk about the job loss experience with the following attributes. With object- objectivity, which means you can state the facts without adding emotional commentary, which means you can talk about your job loss without blaming your employer or putting any personal or emotional um, commentary in there. Um, you can just talk about the facts. This is what happened and, and move on. Uh, you, you don't get personal about it. You don't get defensive about it. Uh, you just basically explain and talk about the events. Um, and you can also talk about the job loss with accountability. You can take ownership of your role in what led to your job loss. Those are two major things that will tell you if you're in the acceptance stage or not. If you can discuss the job loss with objectivity and accountability. And trust me when I say that hiring managers and anyone else you come across that you're going to talk about this job loss with in the job search can tell if you are not in this acceptance stage um, of job loss when they talk to you because they're going to see right through the fact that you're still emotionally tied to it. If you go in for an interview and they ask you about your previous job and why you're not there anymore and you do not speak with objectivity and accountability, they will see right through that. They're going to see that you're still emotionally tied to this and they are going to probably have issues with that. So you're going to want to make sure you're fully in this acceptance stage before you go into these interviews and uh, try to recover your professional career. And again, you don't want to rush through any of these stages. Uh, In order to accept your job loss, it's so important to experience whatever emotions arise. And you can However, manage them and, and make sure they don't get the best of you during this process. It's it's really how you react during all of these stages that make a difference. And all of these stages and the emotions and feelings that come along with them, they're completely natural and valid. I, I want to emphasize that. All of the feelings you're going to go through and emotions are, are completely valid and, and understandable. And the point of this episode was to make you aware of the stages and, and the signs and the qualities and the, and the feelings and emotions that may go with them, uh, as well as what you can do to get through them. And, and I hate to see anyone at all go through this situation, but if you've gone through it or you're going through it or you ever have to go through it, I really hope this episode helps you. Uh, and if you know anybody who's going through it, please share this episode with them. Because a lot of people don't understand that the the uh, five stages of grief do still pertain to people going through job loss. It's not just death or divorce or, or anything like that. It's any kind of tragedy in your life. And losing a job is definitely a tragedy. And, and it can be modified to that situation. So please share this with anybody you feel needs it. Again. Five stages of grief, the job loss. I don't want to see anybody go through this, but if you are, please hang in there. Please take your time getting to the acceptance stage, and I wish you the best of luck. I can't believe we made it to the end of another great episode of Master Your Happy. Thank you so much for listening to the entire episode. Again, I am Robert Rio. Definitely check us out on all social media platforms at Master Your Happy. Visit our Facebook group, Master Your Happy. And our webpage, MasterYourHappy.com. Check out everything that's new. Check out all of our articles, all of the podcast episodes, and catch up with us online.